There you go. Enjoy. Knock yourself out. Eat up. Dive in. Evening. What can I do for you? Hey, what'll it be? Can I help you? What looks good to you? Know what you want yet? Well, you gonna order something? Can't be that hard to make up your mind. No. You always go digging around in people's fireplaces? Ah, no way. I have no idea. No. Yes, fine by me. So, Nancy, nice to meet you. Ned sent you here to check up on me, huh? So, Nancy, you finally decided to talk to me. Back so soon? That was fast. Forget something? You put those books back in the box yet? I said end of conversation. Yes? Ned's a nice guy. I mean, I really don't know him that well, just from school. But when I mentioned that my only living relative just died, he was all like, Yeah? How you feeling, man? You doing okay? Wanna talk? Of course, I guess I do come across as a little needy sometimes. Not really. Great Uncle Bruno named me executor of his estate, which means I have to make sure all his bills are paid and debts taken care of so his assets can be distributed. Unfortunately, he couldn't have cared less about little things like keeping records or balancing checkbooks. Dealing with his creditors and their lawyers has been an absolute nightmare. Great Uncle. Great Uncle Bruno. And no, I wasn't. I wouldn't exactly call Great Uncle Bruno a loved one. My parents died in a car crash when I was eight. Since I had no other relatives, he took me in. Or should I say he shipped me out? Boarding school, summer camp, military school, college. <laughs> he may have looked after me, but he never spent any time with me. I didn't know him at all. I have no idea, nor will I until I get all his affairs settled. He was a dentist for most of his life, so he must have had some money squirreled away. As you can tell, he was darn good at squirreling away junk. Somebody from a curio shop came in and took a quick look around, but it wasn't anything formal. <laughs> no way. I can't imagine anyone putting up with him for a day, let alone for a lifetime. So, thanks for stopping by, Nancy. And now you can report back to Ned that I'm fine and go enjoy New Orleans. No offense, but are you sure you didn't just pass out from the heat and humidity or something and dream that you saw the skeleton dude? Okay, look around all you want. But I should probably warn you, Uncle Bruno was into exotic pets. Didn't believe in cages, so he gave him the run of the place. And just because he's dead doesn't mean they are. So if you're going to go poking around, be careful. Let me guess. Because of the big storm that's blowing in. Everyone in the city's freaking out and you can't get a cab. Person at the bank told me. Just before she put me on hold for two hours. Ah, oh, don't worry. We've got plenty of food here. Beds, candles. You're welcome to stay. Apparently someone stole the canvas. Renee says it disappeared sometime after Bruno died. In a way, it was of my parents. I think it was painted in the garden out back. Renee doesn't like me. Wouldn't surprise me if she took it out of spite. So she says. All I know for sure is that it's gone. Anything else? What box of things? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, somebody screwed up somewhere because I haven't sold anything to anybody. Why would I sell one lousy box of stuff when I'm about to inherit a whole house full of stuff? Get real. How do you know about her? Playing detective is actually a lot more than a hobby with me. Look, you don't need to go telling Renee or any of those lawyers about selling that stuff, right? There wasn't any crystal skull in that box. Well, I did throw in some smaller boxes. Like I said, I was just grabbing stuff. Was it valuable? Great. Be just my luck to have sold something that wasn't junk to that glorified trash collector. What do you need? Just drop dead in the front hallway. I mean, the guy was 95 years old. Here, check it out. Myocardial infarction. That's doctor speak for heart attack. And his best friend, or so I'm told. I've never met him. No? Should I care? Don't know anything about it, sorry. Because great Uncle Bruno used to oversee the cemetery next door. Made that scale model so he could keep track of where everything, or should I say, everyone, was. Crafted all those miniature crypts himself. And people think I'm weird. Thanks to that iguana, papers like non-existent in here. Try asking Renee. Sure don't. Try asking Renee. What do you need chalk for? It's kind of a long story. Well, can't help you there either. Sorry. She's this girl I'm in love with. I think she loves me back, but she's so unpredictable it drives me nuts. I never know what's going to make her happy. Like, 
Just before I left, I took practically every bit of cash I had and bought her a bunch of CDs. You know, to keep her occupied while I was gone, right? Well, soon as I get here, she calls and says her sound system just went bluey and I had to buy her a new one because what good were the CDs I bought her if she couldn't play them? So then I, all the time, mostly over how schizoid she is. I mean, yeah. I wired her the money, but then she called and said she also needed new headphones. Next call, it was new speakers. And now she expects me to buy her a flat screen TV. When I try to talk to her about always wanting more like that, she gets really mad. But I'm afraid if I don't give her what she wants, she'll... I'm afraid she'll dump me. And I couldn't take that. I mean, she's the only girlfriend I've ever had. Ever will have, probably. Looks to me like some kind of tracing. Well, I sure don't know anything about it. That's one of Uncle Bruno's glass eyes. It's the one he was wearing when he died. You want to borrow it? What for? Actually, all I really want is the eye. I mean, it's just so cool. What if you break it? I don't think I want to take that chance. Sorry. I know. Y you still want the glass eye? Take it. Go ahead. It's all yours. You want something, I want something. Take it and we're even, okay? Three hundred bucks. That's all I've gotten out of his estate. I swear. Go on, take it. I was naughty, but from now on I'll be nice, I promise. Don't ask me. It's kind of weird. Apparently he built the crypt himself, but he never indicated in his will or anywhere else that that's where he wanted to be buried. I stuck his ashes in there anyway and had the thing inscribed. If that's not what he wanted, too bad. He had a dog? That's news to me. In other words, no, I sure don't. Groovy. Sounds good. Whatever. Awesome. Probably because he lost one of his. Yep. Wore a glass eye for as long as I can remember. Had a whole collection of them. Like to wear a different color every day. That was Uncle Bruno's pet iguana, Iggy. He's always in here stealing paper. He must be using it to build a nest or something. Look, I had all those books arranged so they fit perfectly in that box. Put them back in, okay? I don't have time. Go right ahead. After you put all those other books back. Come on, Summer. Give me a break here. You never said anything about that. Well, how was I supposed to know? I mean, what am I, telepathic? No, no, come on, don't get upset. Look, I'll, I'll see what I can do, okay? What do you mean, something else? You gotta be kidding me, Summer. I don't have that kind of money. No, no, I meant, I, I don't have it now. But I will, soon, okay? Bye. Oh, man. Don't make her drink any of your weirdo concoctions. Then I really will have to take her to the emergency room. No. No emergency room. No police. Things are complicated enough as it is. I should call them and keep them on hold for five hours and see how they like it. Yes, hello. I am she. Nancy Drew. Your name has a ring to it. Do I know you? Yes, hello. Who is this? Nancy Drew. Are you sure you're not the cheese girl? Of course. Let her rip. Who is it? Yes? Oh, yes. You were the delightful young lady doling out the samples in the tasting room of that cheese factory. Yum, yum. That's ridiculous. There was no cheese tasting room at Wickford Castle. Thanks to you, suddenly all I can think about is how wonderful a nice big slab of Colby cheese would taste right now. Listen, Mandy, I'm on a deadline, so if you could please just tell me why you called. But my name is... Deadline! Let's cut to the chase, shall we? Chop, chop. Ah, now there's a name you can remember. Bole, nice and French. I'm a scholar of French history, you know. Indeed he did. Oui, oui. Because he had read my book, of course. Two, perhaps three years ago, he had just read my book, The Crystal Skulls. Fact or fable, one of my best efforts. Sold like hotcakes smothered in a rich, tangy lemon sauce. I would have hung up on him straight away if he had. I tell you, Brandy, if I had a dollar for every crackpot who's called claiming to own one of those skulls, I'd be able to dine at the Russian tea room every evening for the rest of my life. All right, that's a bit of hyperbole, but you get the picture. No... If memory serves, we talked mostly about the skull called the Whisperer. He wanted to know if I had learned any more about it since my book was published, which I hadn't, 
or if I had any theory as to what happened to it, which I didn't. Well, now, let me think. My, my, such insatiable curiosity, Nelly. You remind me of someone I encountered on one of my journeys. But for the life of me, I cannot remember her name or the circumstances. Ah! The eyes have it. That's what Bruno Bolet said when I turned the tables and asked him if he had any idea where the Whisperer was. He said, the eyes have it. Then he chuckled and hung up. In this crazy day and age, where the shorn hair and used tissues of celebrities get sold for thousands of dollars, there's absolutely no telling, Candy. A half million dollars easily. Maybe even a million. Maybe two. Maybe ten. The sky's the limit. Cha-ching, cha-ching. Wonderful question, Francie. How indeed. Because there are sure to be thousands of fakes out there. Perhaps tens of thousands. But remember, the real skulls were made long before the tools commonly used for carving today were invented. Which means... Let's put on our thinking caps. Exactly so. Ah, would that crystal contained carbon? Because if it did, carbon dating could be used to determine its age, much like carbon dating is employed to determine the age of bones and religious relics. But what is crystal? Quartz. What is quartz? Silicon dioxide. No carbon. No carbon? No carbon dating. No, to determine a crystal skull's authenticity, you must examine it for marks left behind by modern-day tools. Mind you, the marks on a good fake would be microscopic and thus imperceptible to the human eye. However, any thorough laboratory analysis would quickly unmask a counterfeit. And by examining its provenance, its history of ownership, if it can be shown that a particular specimen has been passed along from antiquity into modern times and didn't just suddenly appear in, say, Germany in the mid-19th century, that would tend to support its authenticity as well. I believe that things that defy any so-called rational explanations happen all the time, Nessie. Now, does that mean there are mysterious external forces at work in the universe of which we do not and cannot ever have full knowledge? Or does it all boil down to us? If the human heart desperately wants something to be true, does the human mind have the power to make it true? Who knows? Oh, questions, questions, questions. Oh, how dreary life would be without them. A crew named after the skull and crossbones flag flown by European and American pirates? How so very colorful! Yo ho ho! Why do you ask? Had the Whisperer fallen into the hands of pirates, I promise you my research would have turned up that fact. But it didn't. Therefore, no relationship. Coincidence strikes again. Are you saying the Whisperer was in his possession after all? The scallywag! Why didn't he tell me that? Oh, that's right. I would have hung up on him. Well, if that's the case, then I strongly suggest you take a close look at his so-called heart attack, Sandy. Because if he owned the skull and he died, I guarantee you it was at the hands of someone else. Or oh, my name's not Beatrice Gertrude Winifred Hotchkiss. Good luck to you, dear. Rock and roll. Toodaloo. You've reached the home office of Professor Beatrice Hotchkiss. I've called it a day. And since I hate returning phone calls, mostly because people rattle off their numbers so fast that I never write them down correctly, just call me back later. Ta-ta! I can't use that here. As always, your mission is to solve the mystery by stepping into my shoes and deciding my every move. But in this game, The White Wolf of Icicle Creek, the screen is going to look a little different than it did before. On the lower left side of the screen, you'll see icons for the things that I, Nancy Drew, need like my inventory, journal, and task list. While on the lower right side of the screen, you'll see icons for the things you as the player need, like options, load, save, and exit icons. The icon in the mat above the screen lets you know when I'm wearing something I found in the course of the game. Take a look at the chapter titled Icons for more details. To get from one place to another in the game, just move your cursor around on the screen and click when an arrow pointing in the direction you want to go appears. An arrow pointing forward allows you to go forward, while a back arrow allows you to step back. Sometimes up and down arrows are available, too. Give it a try. 
Find the forward arrow and check out Mr. Woogle Woggle. He's my teddy bear. When you want to turn around, move your cursor to the bottom of the screen until it turns into an arrow that looks like a U-turn or back arrow and click. I always use my magnifying glass to scan my surroundings for clues. When it turns red, I know I'm on to something. When your magnifying glass turns into a question mark, you can talk to someone. When it becomes a hand, you can use it to open and close things, pick up objects, and move things around. To see how this works, move your mouse over this scene until the magnifying glass turns red, then click to zoom in. See how the magnifying glass turned into a hand when you roll it over the key? That means you can pick it up. When you click on an object with a hand cursor, that object gets added to your inventory. Roll your cursor over the key. The magnifying glass turned into a hand when you rolled it over the key, which means you can pick it up. Click on the key and see what happens. Good work! You're a natural! To see what's in your inventory, just click on the inventory icon at the bottom of the screen. To use an item that's in your inventory, just click on it. In fact, try clicking on the key. See how the cursor turned into the item you clicked on? Use the key to click on the lock on my suitcase, and you'll see how good I've gotten at packing. To return an object to your inventory, just click on the inventory icon. Then, click on the Open Inventory box, and the object will go back into storage. You can close your inventory by clicking on the square in the upper right-hand corner, by clicking on the inventory icon, or by clicking on another icon. I keep reminders to myself in my journal. Click on the notebook icon at the bottom left of the screen, and you'll see what I mean. I try to keep my notes tidy by putting them into categories. Just click on a category and you'll see all the entries on that topic I've made up to that point in the game. Click on the clipboard icon and if you're a junior detective, you'll see a list of what I need to do. Organized person that I am, once I've done something, I check it off. Other icons may appear in the lower left as well, like a cell phone or a coin purse, or a particularly useful device that you stumble upon in the course of the game. The floppy disk icon allows you to name your current game, then save it, or to simply save your current game without renaming it. And while we're on the subject, it's a good idea to save your game from time to time while you're playing, just in case. Click on the folder icon and you'll be able to load a previously saved game. Just scroll through the thumbnails, select the game you want, then click on Load. Or, if you click on New, you can start the game over from the beginning. The gear icon allows you to determine how you experience the game. You can also adjust the volume of the music, voices, and sound effects, as well as turn off the closed captioning text and change the color of the background mat. If you have to stop playing and leave the game, just click on the exit icon. Questioning suspects is something all detectives need to know how to do. In the game, to get people to talk to you, all you have to do is click on them. Let's say I've clicked on Mr. Wogglewoggle here. Our conversation will appear in the text box, with his words in yellow and my responses in blue. Click on a response and see what your suspect says next. Excuse me, giant human person, but you seem to be pretty nosy, especially for someone who hardly even has a nose. I mean, compared to mine. Excuse me, Mr. Woogle Woggle, but I'm not nosy. I'm just very curious. You think so? Usually people only call me nosy when they're hiding something. And you seem to be pretty gabby, especially for someone who doesn't even have a mouth. If there are a lot of words in the text box, use the scroll bar to move the text up and down so you can read along. Before you can start playing, you need to decide whether to play as a junior or senior detective. If you choose junior detective, you'll get more hints than you will if you're a senior detective, and the puzzles will be a little easier. When you're ready to start playing, just click on the plane tickets and hang on to your hat. Hi, I'm Nancy Drew. Since you can tell a lot about a person by where he or she lives, I thought I'd introduce myself by showing you my room. As you can see, I keep it pretty neat. Of course, I don't spend that much time in here. I always seem to be off solving mysteries. Here's my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and poke around. If you want to know the particulars of how I do what I do, take a look at the book titled How to Be a Detective. It's real helpful, especially if you're new to the mystery-solving business. And be sure to check out my scrapbook. I put memorabilia from all my past cases in there. A lot of them were pretty dangerous and at times really scary. But don't say anything about that to my dad, okay? He worries about me enough as it is. And whatever you do, read what's in the file called Case File. That will tell you all about the mystery I'm about to try to solve. If you think you're ready to dive into that mystery, just click on the plane ticket and you'll be on your way.
In this game, you'll be able to control the passage of time by using the clock in your room. If you want it to be the next day, or if you prefer to do your snooping at night, just rotate the little alarm hand to whatever time you want it to be. Then set it by clicking on the button on top of the clock. Simple. Lying there in the snow, defeated, Yanni owned up to everything. He tainted the potato salad with bad mayonnaise, he iced down the back stairs, he opened a gas valve in the sauna, he blew up the bunkhouse using the clock he took from Guadalupe's room, and he left those pictures of Bill Kessler from me in the sauna, although he swears the door got stuck by accident, in order to cast suspicion on someone else.